Please join me with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening and welcome to the Hampton Board of Selectmen meeting for April 30th. We have uh, public comment. Anybody from the public wishing to speak? Seeing none, announcements and community calendar. Mary Louise? Uh, just that I, I want to extend, and I, I'm sure the board will join me in uh, to extend our thoughts to the Bean family uh, on the loss of June Bean last Thursday. Uh, she was a nice lady and, and a pillar of the community, and uh, we will miss her. Okay. I would like to mirror what Selectman Woosley just stated. I did on what Selectman okay. Woosley just said. Rick? Yeah, June was quite a lady. She was my friend for many years. Yeah. I had a lot of fun with her. And, uh, I, you know, I hope she rests in peace. Yeah, the same here. I mean, uh, my mother-in-law is across the hall from her up there, so I'd see June regularly, and my my wife would probably see her every at least four or five days a week, and uh, wow. she will be missed. I'd also like to send our condolences out to the uh, family of Dan Gidley. Uh, his sister passed away last week, mm -hmm. and uh, so I think uh, uh, you know. Again, that's it's it's hard when you lose a loved one, and uh, it's hard when you lose a, a sibling. So. We're still a small community and miss them. Absolutely. Absolutely. Approval of the minutes. April 16th, 2019. Non-public. should be 2018. Yeah. Non-public. I'll so move. Uh, Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. 2016, two, oh yeah, April 16, <laughs> 2018, <laughs> non-public session. I moved. Accept them. I'll second, Jim. All in favor? Unanimous. I'm trying to get ahead of you by a Jeez, I guess you are. <laughs> that year went by fast. It did. Consent agenda. We have a 2018 new veteran spouse and elderly exemption. We have the Hampton and Exeter sewer agreement. We have an entertainment license and posted permit. We have a parade and public gathering permits. And we have the use of town property. Please call. I'll make a motion that we move the consent agenda. Second. Second. No. All those in favor? Unanimous. Appointments. Trustees of the trust funds. I think I saw Steve back there. Yeah. Good evening. Good evening. Okay. Good. Okay. So I guess uh, let's start. Uh, well, just uh, well, first of all, as far as performance goes, um, yeah, through the first quarter this year, um, so the portfolio I guess was off about 1.6 percent, uh, which again wasn't really bad compared to the volatility market. Uh, over the 12 months, up 4.93. So, you know, again, a portfolio is positioned fairly conservatively. You know, we're not trying to hit, you know, home runs, you know, we, we, because we don't want to strike out. And uh, so the um, you know, portfolio have a good amount of bonds, you know, just looking to get good interest rates. And, uh, you know, that no matter which way the markets swing, uh, you know, you see, you'll see swings. I mean, even today we're up 100 in the morning, down 140 <laughs> by 4 o'clock. You know, the markets swing with whatever comes out of uh, different politicians' mouths, you know. And um, so, you know, I said, I've, I've been at this 34 years. I just tell people this, don't pay attention to all the noise out there. It's not too complicated. So um, that's the way the portfolio is. <laughs> this is a very, um, let's just say, very dull portfolio, which is what we want. And, yeah. Uh, so. well, as Bill Hartley used to say, it's 100-year it's money, so it's, right. it's there for the long term. And I think Dave and his team has done a pretty good job of structuring it the way it should be structured. Uh, nothing too glamorous. Bonds still provide interest to the town. Stocks provide dividends. I mean, that's pretty much it, unless you 
have any questions? Any for questions us. from the board, Mary Louise? Uh, if we bomb Iran, we don't have to worry. <laughs> no. No, no, okay. not, unless, not unless we have our money over there. You know, but, uh, you know the, like I said, there's always going to be some noise that comes out of uh, Washington, and uh, you know, I, the thing what I always tell people is, you know, they just never get caught up in the emotion of it. You know, that, that's how people shoot themselves in the foot when it comes to, uh, you know investing and um, you know like I said this this portfolio will simply for the most part we're just trying to get some decent interest rates so that's pretty much it this town is very lucky to have good prudent investors yeah, yeah. Regina um, I have no questions yes I agree with you that just because the market's shooting up and down there's no cause for harm it's gonna happen constantly but would it be possible when you have a chance if I could just get a copy of the report I think that our portfolio is great I think we've invested fairly conservatively, and it seems that uh, it's proven well for the town. Thank you. Jim? We usually put that on, online, right? <coughs> yes, this yeah. is part of the uh, I mean, is it online now? Yes. Or? It should be. <coughs> okay, super. And if it's not, I'll make sure it is. Super. Good report. Thank you. Good job. Rick? Thank you. you we're all set then. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Thank you, gentlemen. <laughs> Appreciate it. Anthony Kiro, Earth and Stone oh, okay. Contracting. Thank you. I'll make sure everybody else gets a copy too. Thanks. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. Here or there, does it matter? Either one. Just, oh, okay. Just, just the this might be the last time uh, this <laughs> round to ask for approval to extend my permit to, to use place called parking. I'm almost done. I probably have like um, three little jobs left to do on the beach. I completed two big ones, uh, 1038 and 1040. Those are really big seawalls. One lasted like two months. But I'm pretty much just doing some small repairs to stairs, and I'm just about done. So. Any questions? Mr. Chairman, yep. I'll be happy to move that we allow Mr. Kiro to um, continue his work at Place Cove parking lot up until May 15th. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank Good you job. very much. That was easy. Oh, bless him in this weather. <laughs> Town manager's report. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, uh, advise our residents to please register your dogs. All your licenses expired today, Ooh. so we want the dog to be treated well. The household, household hazardous waste day is fast approaching. Residents are reminded that water-based paint is not accepted at this activity. Water-based paint can be disposed of with a regular trash once completely dried. Kitty letter will do that for you if you'd like to drive fast. <laughs> Please do not dispose of video display devices in your trash. It's a violation of both state and federal environmental laws. Specific devices cannot be placed in your trash as that are, are listed in the DPW website. Many of those items can be taken to Best Buy or Staples for free disposal, which is a good deal. Work is progressing on the cleanup of the old Coast Guard property on Ocean Boulevard. When completed, we request that people retrain, refrain from climbing and walking upon the old seawall. May 12th is the Post Office de uh, Department's food drive. Please leave non-perishable donations in your mailbox. Um, if I may, though, Mr. Manager, you can't put anything in the mailbox. Hang it on the... Well, put it on the ground. That under came from the post office department. So they did. Yes, they did. They said put it in the mailbox. Mailbox. <laughs> oh. Um, and for those of you who are registered, and we've had a number of inquiries about this, uh, you are required to have address numbers on your property. And if you go online, the town website, you'll find the ordinance that requires that. Excellent. Also, uh, in approximately a week, we anticipate the beginning of the Aquarium Well 22 pumping test. They will be pumping um, and their monitoring devices will begin to test on or near May 2. Currently the pumping portion of the test is scheduled on or near May 9th. The pumping period is will last a minimum of 14 days followed by a short recovery period. It is anticipated that they intend to pump 1,350,000 gallons a day for that period. Ooh. It's a lot of water. It comes out of the new deep well. Mm -hmm. And last but not least, Mr. Chairman, uh, on Wednesday, May 2nd, 2018, beginning at 5.30, uh, there will be a public informational meeting held in this room, located 100 Winnicott Road, Hampton, to discuss the planned drawdown of the Old Mill Pond Dam for the purpose of completing required repair work. 
The town plans to temporarily lower the level of the impoundment by up to five feet beginning on or about May 25th. Wow. The water bill will be released gradually through the installation of temporary diversion structures. Interested parties are encouraged to attend the meeting. Questions or comments should be directed to the Department of Public Works. What about May 10th? Haven't gotten there yet. <laughs> they gave you a perfect record at the meeting. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's the last thing on my list is May 10th. There is a public hearing on May 10th, 2018 at the Marston School, on Marston Way in Hampton from 7 to 9 p.m. Those interested uh, in the proposal for traffic flow on Route 1A, uh, please come and um, the Beach Master Plan Transportation section update will be that evening. They're going to plan on topic tra talking about transportation grant for Route 1A, the Hampton Beach Traffic Flow Plan, and parking access to, at Hampton Beach and traffic and pedestrian safety. Please come listen to the engineering report and present your comments to the Hampton Beach Area Commission. That's it, sir. Any questions on the town manager's report? No. Are they going to talk about the sinkholes? I believe they're all going to be fixed by then. Yeah, I would just like to say that, you know, people need to make sure they go to the meeting on May yes. 10th. It's so important. Um, a lot of people can decide whether they think it's all a good idea of what, you know, they, this is their chance to complain. This is their chance to uh, voice their opinion. It, you know, it may be too late because from what they said at the meeting, it's pretty much this is it. But um, I think Nancy Stiles has worked very hard to, and she tried to com, um, commit these people from the state to that it isn't too late. So it's up to people to come out there and speak. And it depends how you look at this. It's not always what's in this, but what's been left out. And if you live north of Boar's Head, where the sinkholes are that uh, Mrs. Wolsey's uh, talking about, you can see how you're being left out. Right. And you know, they're saying, well, the other, the part that's to the <coughs> south of Boar's Head's going to be done in 2024. Well, does that mean that north of Boar's Head's going to be 2034? Uh, it's people's uh, need to get out there. They need to say what they feel. And your information that you say there won't just be used for this study, but it will be used in a lot of other things that are coming up, such as the town complaint against the state. I have a couple questions, too. Go ahead. Um, one, I want to, I agree 100% with what Rick just said, very important, especially people that live north of Boys Head to go to this. Yep. Um, I just saw some actual plans here. And everything, it stops at Boys Head. So I mean, if this stuff's not going to happen till 2024? Yeah, 2024 is when it's supposed to happen at the main beach. Then right. you know you have to consider the next master plan goes what to 2034? Yep, 10 years. And, uh, I'll so be that, 84. Right. Hopefully. So that means like North Beach residents are looking to have pretty much nothing done yeah. until 2034. Or so people, you know, some, it could be in the plans. Right. It, yeah. So at least like Rick says, if even though we're only technically talking about the first phase right now, it's going to really, you know, the input is going to carry forward throughout the entire phases. So very important, May 10th, Marston School Cafeteria, 7 p.m. And also, I have a question about the Well 22 implementation. I know I was concerned a couple weeks ago because Aquarian wanted to come in to the quarterly meeting when the town manager wasn't going to be present, and I want to discuss things that I would preferably as a selectman's rep have the town manager present for. Mm -hmm. I would like that to happen. So they now said that they're not able to come in until June 25th. And now they're going to be starting this pump test, which I know there was some concerns about. So they have a permit to pump that water directly into the system? That's correct. They do have a permit to do that. without. It'll be tested after it's pumped in. Or it'll be tested before they start pumping. It'll be tested during the pumping mm -hmm. on a periodic basis, and it'll be tested after the pumping is done. So I think this is a good opportune time to bring up again that they're looking to reestablish the commission that, I don't remember, the advisory committee? Yes. Mm -hmm. With, I mean, it could be, I guess, other elected officials, but ideally I think they like to see just customers participate in this commission. So that maybe some of this communication can come to the selectmen 
in a more expedient process. I mean, I know I try, but I mean, everyone's schedules are sort of crazy. So, but I just wanted to bring that up because now we're going to be testing well 22 and we haven't had them in here to make us comfortable, I guess is the word I want to use. So anybody I'm that has any questions should feel free to call <coughs> Carl McMorrin over at Aquarium of Water. Yes. That, I'd yeah. like to say one more thing. Um, and again, Nancy Stiles has done a wonderful job. I think if she had been there for the first 10 years, we probably wouldn't be facing what we're facing today. True. Uh, but the um, one thing that did come out in this meeting the other day was, you know, uh, William Rose is very adamant that there is a plan for North of Boar's Head to Winnicunit Road. And he did, and I think we have a copy of it right here, of the rest of the plan. I think he ran right home after the meeting to, to draw <laughs> something up because supposedly there is going to be some type of a rendition of something at this plan for North of Boar's Head. That's why everybody that's North of Boar's Head wants to be there. Uh, if it is there, supposedly it's going to be there, and Nancy Stiles pressed him to do it. So hopefully it's going to be there. And it's, this is a meeting for everyone to talk, not so much the members of the commission. In fact, I don't believe anyone's speaking um, that's on the commission, maybe Nancy. Uh, but it's for the people to speak and to be heard. And there's going to be, uh, they're trying to do, think of ways to make it easy for people to speak and to be very comfortable. And uh, they're preparing at the Marston School, and it's a, this is a good opportunity. Jim? The only question I had was, uh, what, when is the hazardous waste day? Do we know the actual date of that? Too much paper. I know. Yeah. Uh. We don't have it. That's okay. I just want to make sure we it's know that it's June, right? Yeah, it is June. No. Well, that's all right. I. No. They didn't put it down. Nope, it wasn't there. But I'll have it fast. We'll and, get it up on the website. And so, and they are they are cleaning up the old Coast Guard station. I they know are. there have been some complaints from some of the public, but public's also going to the stands. It's been a very hard winter. Yes, and uh, our public works have been out there doing an excellent job and they've been out cleaning and doing the best they can. Actually so. we hired a contractor because we didn't have enough time to get it done ourselves. Absolutely. Also had a couple complaints last week of the uh, sound on the mm -hmm. uh, oh, the yes. cameras here and, and I talked to the, the guys in the back room and they explained that they, they're working on some of their new equipment and so they had some issues with that but they supposedly have that all straightened out now. Someone told me it's one only when I speak. Uh, no, speak uh, up, then. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> Mr. Chairman? Yes. We're living with a red-listed bridge, courtesy of the state, so obviously nobody's in a big hurry. There are a lot of red-listed bridges in the state, and we have the one of the worst. You're right. We, we have number one. We're the best on the list. Yeah. That's one thing I noticed, that um, that you know, Victoria Sheehan that was appointed, uh, have you seen her around? No. No, she was, uh, and I met her, and I, I have a lot of faith that she would be doing a wonderful job uh, and working hard, but that must reflect how much there is to do because we have an island cleaners, and that was a couple of years ago. But she, there was probably a lot to do here in New Hampshire. They're buried. They, yeah, it's no doubt. Okay, on to old business. RSA 4114A proceedings vote. 595 Ocean Boulevard, tax map 234, lot 3 off Winnicunit Road, Spring Marsh, Flyport Realty, LLC, pursuant to RSA 4114A, requesting the purchase or lease of town-owned parcels behind Flyport property at 595 Ocean Boulevard. It is Flyport's intent to construct a commercial building and hopes to utilize the subject lot for access and or parking. Is it as it was utilized historically by the former Lupo's restaurant. Mr. Tell me. I'll yield to town council. Uh, we have had, uh, there was a meeting with the Conservation Commission uh, last week. Uh, the commission had uh, contacted the Attorney General's office uh, regarding charitable trust division regarding whether or not the town's <coughs> owned land in this case could be subject to that Cypre procedure that was done in connection with Cornerstone and it was informed that no, that procedure is not available. 
um, I would believe that uh, the in light of the language of RSA 4114A, the selectmen uh, lack the authority to convey an interest in this town-owned property, and do not, and that this section does not apply to the property here involved. So, if um, how would the way go that they would be allowed to do it? Would it have to go to a town meeting? Would it have to go to court? Would it have to? Well, that's uh, the statutes are sort of silent on this subject. Uh, the manager has recommended that one way to, to proceed in that mm -hmm. line is to uh, have the town meeting uh, pass an article to uh, reproach the legislature about uh, creating an exception uh, for that. Did I get that right? I think that's 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 pretty close. Um, since the statute is. Uh, basically against this proposition. Uh, it would be possible for someone to petition the annual town meeting, which would come up next spring, uh, to have a home rule piece of legislation enacted by the town to go to the general court for enactment with the general court and then come back to the town for approval once enacted and allow the town to either sell or lease the property. I think that's the only way you're going to get there from here since 4114A specifically does not allow us to do uh, conservation properties I have a question for it I totally understand that according to everything I've seen it doesn't seem legally that it's possible for us to lease or sell the property but I have talked to actually the Conservation Commission chairman sent out a letter to us which I read yeah. and then I had questions on so I talked to yeah. Jay Diener this morning and he pretty much has reiterated everything that is being said here right now but subsequent to that I've also talked to the applicant, and he has told me that he might be willing. What about a land swap? <clears throat> because apparently he owns two parcels of land, the one right next to it, 597. Does it mind if, is it okay if I ask? I just don't want to say the wrong thing. Is it okay if uh -huh. I ask the party? Is it the other property that you own? Is it 597 Ocean Boulevard? Yes. Okay, so he has part of his land back there which is not conservation, it's you own the land, correct? Yes, he does. Yeah. Okay. So if he were to, I mean, this would obviously <coughs> all have to go through the Conservation Commission, which is why we're sort of in a predicament right now, because we're supposed to vote on this tonight. And I just found out all this information not that long ago. So I wanted to bring it to the entire board. But um, if he were to swap his land that he, talking to building, cannot use anyway, because he's not able to build on it. If he were to discuss with conservation a way of swapping that land out, and then he were able to use that one, he just wants to use it to be able to get into the parking. He doesn't want to no. use the parking spots back there or anything. He just wants to use it, an easement, I'm going to call it, but I don't know if legally that's what we would call it, to be able to go down and get into his parking. Still one thing you have to look at this all along. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, all along Ocean Boulevard, many people own halfway across the marsh, yep. and they can't do anything with their land. Right. So, you know, this is something, before we can even begin to think about this, you have to bring the conservation. Right, issue. exactly. That's what I'm asking, if there's a way that we can have them able to meet one more time before we make well, a final... Only if you go to the general court, because the statute of conservation land provides no mechanism for the disposal of conservation land under any conditions. So Including that's what we were stuck with. We're, we're stuck with it unless we can go to the general court and get them to give us permission to do it. And if you're swapping the land, isn't it called mitigation? Well, no, in, in this case, cases. you're actually transferring land. You're, you're transferring interest or ownership in property. And the conservation statute doesn't allow conservation land to be sold or disposed of in any way. There's no mechanism within the conservation. <clears throat> then, therefore, we don't vote on it at all. That's the other thing I was going to ask Mark? about. Well, I, right. I, I, since like, we're we already into this, this process, have I have given the board a recommended motion uh, to uh, deny. Well, the town owns the land, but only for conservation purposes. That's whoever wrote the Enabling Act did a very good job of freezing everything. Okay. Well, I make a motion hereby move to deny the request under RSA 4114 due to the selectman's lack of authority under this section to convey an interest in town-owned conservation land to which the provisions of this section do not, do not apply. <coughs> this tax-deeded property having been put under the jurisdiction of the Conservation Commission 
pursuant to the terms of Article 28 of the 1994 town meeting. It's a mess. Is there a second? I'll second. Who? Who said that? I just. I'll second. All right. <clears throat> Open so for discussion. There doesn't seem to be anything else that can be done. Here. Not without some action by the general court. I mean, the town meeting can petition the general court. There has to be some authority above the elected officers of the town, which has got to be town meeting. And then enabling legislation could be proposed. It could be enacted by the general court. It could be signed by the governor. It would then come back to the town meeting for approval. Wow. But that would take two years. And what about the, um, about, could they just go to the town meeting and ask that there'll be a, um, like just to use a little edge of it instead of any of it? The All problem it. is the town meeting doesn't have any authority here either. Once it's conservation land, the town meeting can't dispose of it, and the selectmen can't dispose of it, and the conservation commission can't dispose of it. Whoever wrote this statute wrote it so tight mm. that there's no provision in the Enabling Act for transferring real property that belongs to conservation commission. So who did write it? I don't know, but I'd like to I meet mean, him. Is it written at the state level? Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's not a town. Yeah. No, it's uh, and what about if by any chance it turns out that there is a special town meeting? Could this be thrown on there? If there's a petition, if there okay. is a meeting, don't know if, if there will if be. If there is a meeting, yeah. that maybe this could be put on there to speed it's it up. It's possible. Yeah. It still would take a year. Yeah, because you've got to get it in the next legislative session. It can't go in this oh. year. It's got to go in the 2019 session got to be enacted then it would go to the 2020 town meeting mm -hmm. would his position be any different if he hadn't taken that building down nope he owns the building he owns the land the building sits on he's he's perfectly within his rights to do anything with that portion of land that's but his even he though can do some what he of wants. it was on the other land well it was encroached on the other land mm. yeah, and I believe when Lupo's vacated that building we told that it had to go so he was aware of that as the owner of the building at the time. That's probably why someone didn't buy it from him. It could very well be, yeah. So what is the suggestion that we're going to... We can't do anything here. No, it's up, to, it's up to somebody to petition the town meeting. And it, at any event, whatever happens here, you can't get it until the 2020 town meeting. Because of the way motion. our have a motion schedule and the, the state yeah. works. So, well, as long as I want to get everybody talking about, we have a motion, we have a second. <coughs> Any other questions? All those in favor? Opposed? Abstain? One abstention. Okay. I will say that you you have a vehicle parked on the uh, right away that's there, the, the, the uh, fire, lane. fire lane that needs to be moved. That driveway that runs in there that has access to the marsh is a fire lane. Owned by the town. Yeah, it, it will be. It will be posted because the selectmen have ordered me to post it. But so we'd appreciate you moving the vehicle because the fire department can't get to the would back of the condo. Appreciate you let me know this six weeks ago too that you didn't have the authority to do that. We're just finding all this out from the attorney general. Very convenient. Thank you. No. So, B, RSA 4114, proceeding 9 Dover Avenue map, 104, lot 203, release of town owed deed restrictions on formerly leased land. The provision of the deed from which the town is, the town for which relief <coughs> is requested is in paragraph 4, which restricts against the premises being subdivided, although the lot is not going to be physically subdivided. Do you have anything on that? Um, I have a recommended motion if the board wishes to proceed. Um, I did on my own have a question as to what was actually going to be done here since there's a single family residence on there now which is apparently proposed to be replaced. Uh, a condominiumization is a form of subdivision so that if the new residence is proposed to be condominiumized then that would be a, a, a reason for this to occur. I just wasn't sure because what's there now is not a a two family. Mr. Manager, you got any? No, that about sums up. Questions? May I inquire? Sure. Um, the property you said the purpose is is 
not related to the land. It would be the structure on the land. So it's a single family now, but it could conceivably be reconfigured into two family or several families. The, the applicant indicated in their application that they weren't trying to physically subdivide the land. Okay. So I assume what they're talking about is a, a condominiumization of the, whatever building is there. Okay. And as I think you pointed out to me, Mary Louise, there is a uh, there is a variance application plot, which seems to suggest there's going to be a new structure. Uh. I'm assuming what they're asking to do is to uh, put up a uh, a building that can be two units or maybe even more. I'm not sure. Okay. Are they here? Are they here? Yes. yes. Oh. Are they allowed to speak? Sure. If you got a question for them. Yeah. <laughs> Clarify, please. <laughs> yeah, Ray, sit down. That's okay. fine. Patricia Malone, property owner. George Manthorne. Hi. Hi. Um, so, yes, the plan is to, um, to take down the existing single family home that's there and uh, put up a two family duplex. Uh, we've been to uh, ZBA for variance um, and will be before the planning board. The Wednesday. Second, Wednesday. So it's a duplex, not a condex? It's going to be a, a duplex, um, but it will be it will be condex or condominiums. One unit will become two. There's one unit there now? Yes. There's a single family. It's the only single family home on the street current, currently. Mm -hmm. There's a four family behind us, a four family to the west <coughs> of us two units to the east of us, two units across the street, three, I mean, so. So the, um, the cons, the, uh, your, be, where are you in front, uh, at now with this? The planning, the planning board or the zoning board? We already went to zoning. Uh, and they, for, have, they gave you the a permit for a, uh, Correct. got an approval, yes. And they approved it for a condo. Correct. And so instructed us to come before this board duplex. for Usually they do a the duplex deed so that people come back later and ask for right. a condo. Right. right. The duplex would not necessarily, a, a, a two-family without condominiumization would still be a, a single lot, a, not a subdivision. But once you condominiumize, it is a subdivision. Mm -hmm. That's why we're talking about subdivision here. It's all right. I just, uh, I'm, I'm I understand now what they're proposing. Mm -hmm. Chris? Yes. Just when you're ready. Go ahead. I'm good. I don't know because I didn't watch the zoning board meeting. Is there access to, if you're a single unit now, a single dwelling, um, so you have a car or two, mm -hmm. is there an impediment if there are two, um, two dwellings on that lot? What would happen with parking and did the zoning board do any of that? Uh, yeah, I mean, they were provided with a set of plans that showed elevations, structural improvements, the area of coverages uh, that uh, we were going to cover with impervious, where the parking were. Okay. Um, There's currently a two car uh, driveway. Right. Oh, we, we made the allotments that needed to be made according to. Um, in order to get a building permit and a driveway permit. Yeah. So how many driving spaces are that now? Is it two, two or is it two. three or is it four? Well, so today there are two with one street side parking. Mm -hmm. um, the proposal would be for four off street parking spots, two in a garage, uh, okay. and then two, you know, two outside off, of outside. Off the street also. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah. By design, whether we. Um, they allowed us to leave the building closer to the right of way. Uh, some of it was because of the grade of the property uh, over the years. Um, as the neighbors improved their properties, of course, they've added fill, and and most of them, according to the topography um, that was done by Millennium Engineering, um, have raised their property up there. It's in some cases, over two feet. So, the backyard of the property currently and the driveway itself are, you know, really at a almost two or three foot grade from street level 
and during the past uh, hmm. you know a couple of good rains a couple of good storms that we've had that's where all the water ends up so uh, <laughs> we applied for a variance to keep the property closer to the street uh, in order to not really really to not disturb it my neighbors don't have uh, water in their crawl spaces now and we didn't want them to have water in their crawl spaces later so but there's a deed restriction that apparently is is has been Perfect. in place uh, you know here and on the beach and in the island section for uh, some it seemed like there was some question where some of the lots there were deed restricted some of the lots weren't deed restricted whether they were before 1960 mm -hmm. unfortunately most of the records for this uh, lot seem to have been lost either in a flood at city hall or some water fire. damage or fire um, so we looked <laughs> peter sari represents us and he suggested that we just go through this process to make sure that we can do it the right way any other questions i'm good thank you mr chairman jim I move to approve the amendment of deed restriction number four for nine Dover Avenue map 104 lot 203 to partially modify said deed restriction number four which formally read as follows the grantee will not erect any buildings upon the premise within seven feet of any boundary line nor shall the premises be subdivided all outbuildings and sheds other than stables or garages shall be connected with and attached to the dwelling house stable or garage on the lot by deleting the phrase nor shall the premise be subdivided so that the said restriction four will now read as follows the grantee will not erect any buildings upon the present present premise within seven feet of any boundary line all outbuildings and sheds other than stables or garages shall be connected with and attached to the dwelling house stable or garage on the lot so how close is it to the lot to the D, to the uh Line. to the, the right of way at the street so the main so building that's the main problem is the street yeah. one so the existing building is 5.6 feet from the right of way we actually moved the building back to seven feet we moved the building back actually to nine feet there'll be a, a small two-foot overhang uh, that blocks the rain over the garage doors so the closest part of the building would be that overhang and it would be at seven feet so I have a motion do we have a second 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 any other questions? All those in I'm favor? Good. Sounds like Mary Louise. Tried to do everything. No, to make it. Opposed. You're opposed. Four to one. So yeah, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. We have one uh, 2017 Warren Article 44. Mary Louise, you brought this up, so. Uh, I've got to see where I put my. Has the copies of. Well, I may have forgotten to bring them with me. Um, there was only eleven thousand expended, to the best of my recollection, on the report that Christie had for the year end 2017 for Article 44. Could be. Okay. And <clears throat> but I understand that subsequent to that purchase orders were signed yep what for and how much money and I, I I feel left kind of hanging I don't know whether you folks got oh they uh, they brought them in uh, back I believe in January or February uh, oh, okay that's why I so don't it was remember. long before you were yeah. back here uh, to finish up we got the one from uh, from Unitil we still needed to get the ones from Fairpoint, or it's now consolidated. Consolidated now. Whatever. Yeah. yeah. And uh, telephone company the, and uh, the couple of telephone company. company in the Two couple. So this companies. is utilities that were <clears throat> compensated. They, that was for them to work on the plan for the prime, the, for the preliminary designs. Right. To come back with. Right. So that's what that money has been used for. Right. I think about two hundred thousand of the three hundred thousand has been expended. Okay, and the I seem to recall the uh, experience Hampton giving a check. Yeah, Did they gave a check of thirty thousand dollars. Right. So that is. So that was their part portion. Right. They, they were doing ten percent. Okay. Of what of what the uh, what the amount was. So we got the. We don't have the part, we don't, the only part we have back right now is right. the part from Unitel. We're still waiting on the other parts. Right. Unitel had to do their work first because of the number of lines they have. Uh, and that will, 
sort of Set the assist stage. the other utilities on where to go. Mm -hmm. They they provided four different plans for us. I remember that. So and I can't find the copy that I had, and I think so Fred said he only had one. Copy. Unitil had I to got one someplace. I just haven't found. Can it we ask Unitil for a copy for each of us again to refresh our? Oh, memory? We have a copy someplace. Yes, we'll do that. Yes, we can get a copy yeah, of the Unitil right. plan, but we're still waiting yeah. for the ones from right. the, the other utilities. The, the other utilities that are on right. the polls. To find out and what the cost. Before we make a decision of, of which way we're going to go. Do. Correct. Actually, yeah. there's no decision for us to make. The only the warrant article allowed us to pay the cost uh, with a 10 percent donation from Experience Hampton to mm -hmm. pay the cost of having the utilities draw up the plans. Right. That's it. That's all it does. Nothing right. else. Right. Anything else has to go through another warrant article to town meeting. Nothing else is going to happen until town meeting votes. Okay, so we're just going to get the reports. Right. And then what relevance does this have to Article 9 this year? It doesn't. It doesn't? Mm. <coughs> if Article 44, if town meeting were to appropriate the funds for Article 44 and Article 44's designs were actually constructed, um, then some of the information in Article 9 would not have to be done, or if it weren't constructed, some of it would have to be done. Um, there's a contingency in there because of the, if the lines have to be moved and they're underground, there'd be no street lights. So we had to provide a contingency for street lights. That's why you have, and we tried to designate it as something different because street lights for a public utility is completely different than street, private street lights for a town. So we, we put a different title in there, which doesn't mean anything. Um, just so we would know that that particular type of design was underground utility for the town only. That's the aluminum that we have to put up. But we're so not those like, huge poles or huge aluminum towers that the utility companies use. Well. <laughs> it gets kind of sophisticated after a while. Yeah. But, we have uh, a challenge here. It's, we had to provide the contingency. If the, if the lines are moved underground, we had two choices. We could either <clears throat> have giant aluminum poles erected down the length of the street, which are not very attractive, uh, and we would be responsible for their maintenance because it's street lighting. So we'd have to pay if the poles had to be replaced. Um, and that would be part of our cost because of the amortization requirement. Or we could put smaller lights in that we own. And that would be easier because we can maintain those with our staff and our equipment as opposed to these things that are 40 feet in the air, and, and 50 feet. And Fred, we talked about, when we talked about this, we, we equated it to similar to the lights that are on Highland Ave. The Highland, lights that are Church, Church and, and A and B Street. A and B Street. Right. So um, that we put in down there that we now own. And so the, the utilities don't charge us for those lights on those streets right. anymore. Right. We own them. We only pay for the power to run as opposed to renting those for 30 years. I, I think a lot of this was not made. I looked on Article 44 more as a, um, you know, working on the actual Route 1. It didn't seem to me to be just lighting. It's only part of it. It's What they're talking about here is the Article 44 is to underground all of the utilities from High Street mm -hmm. all the way down to Winnicott Road. That There'd wasn't, be no poles, no wires, no nothing. That wasn't made clear in the article. Well, it just said lighting. That was the. It didn't that, even say ornamental lighting. No, Article 44 was to underground utilities. Um, gee, I didn't bring my. On the petition of Experience Hampton, at least 25 et etc., shall the town of Hampton vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $300,000 for the limit preliminary design services for the reconstruction of Lafayette Road from the area near the intersection of High Street south toward Winnicott Road. Design services would include street, sidewalk, utility, and lighting improvements for the downtown Hampton Village in an effort to revitalize the downtown. The preliminary design would be used to support a future project that has the potential to be funded by the Road Improvement Capital Reserve Fund created under Article 16 of the, eight, of the 98 town meeting in accordance with RSA 35 for the purpose of maintenance and reconstruction of streets, set appropriation to be offset by a donation from Experience Hampton, estimated to be uh, no less than $30,000. The article is contingent upon the donation of not less than $30,000 uh, and the donation's acceptance by the Board of Selectmen. The explanation of the article and all the meetings that 
circulated with the article was that the, the intent of the article was to underground the electric utility services on Lafayette Road from Winneconnet to High Street. Or go in the back of the buildings. Or go in oh, behind the buildings right. or down the, down the that's railroad. That's why we have a couple of uh, yeah. some other oh, places. That wasn't stated in the Warren article. But the okay. main point... It was no. brought up over and over again, though. Right. The, main, not, the main point I mean, was I that it was a preliminary it. design, right? Right. right. It's they not were. action. Nobody's <laughs> taken any action. That's right. It's a no. preliminary design. Right. Under a Warren article, it was approved. Right. Correct. Okay. It was discussed. Unbelievable. And, uh, you know, at, I think at the beginning, it more or less just kind of set underground. But then as it got discussed, as because it went over a long period of time. Yeah. It was about going behind the buildings because it probably was going to be cheaper. So, you know. That's why we have a couple of options from Unitel yeah. to but your, allow us to do that. Your average voter voting on that article didn't get this picture, and I confess. Well, I, they voted for it. I, I know, but I don't believe. If, if the average voter, and, and I'm not a wizard here, just reading the context of the article, it was related to Route 1 from High Street down to Winnicott. Didn't but say anything about lights point, in the Bill parking Bean lot. Led the um, charge to that, you know, that there was, it was considered that this was just too much money to spend, and that's how it, all of a sudden everything started to uh, change a little bit. The fact of the matter is also that Warren articles are very confusing. Yeah, it's very confusing for a lot of people, and if you yeah. don't look into the history right. of how it came about and what it's mm. describing, then you're not going to know what you're voting on. So that's that's the voters' responsibility to know what they're voting on. Correct. Not, I mean, it's, it's been voted on, it's been approved. We can't go back and uh, and approve it. And they're but always you're... they're just as confusing afterwards. That's yeah. the worst part. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I I so. just yeah I I. Uh, I have a clearer understanding now, thank you, but I confess that I didn't hang on every word at every meeting, you know, unless you're... Well, apparently a lot of folks did because it only passed by 71 votes. Yeah. So it wasn't, it wasn't a landslide, but it was in favor. I have a question about that because I have some, had some questions as far as this $300,000 go, which, I mean, completely, it's, we're not done with the study yet. We're still waiting on pieces. Yeah. So do you think maybe by maybe the end of April or May we'll probably have a total picture of what actually got spent out of that? It should be approximately two hundred thousand dollars. Okay. Yeah. All right. So there you go. Because we do have committed costs for that. Right. Okay. And we do have contracts for it. And, and I'm assuming that when this is all done and the final drawings are in and everything's there, that we'll be coming back to the board and saying we want to prorate the money because this is a contribution plus an appropriation. So that 10% uh, of the $200,000 will be returned to Experience Hampton and the balance will go into the Treasury. 10% of the $30,000. Oh, because they paid 10% of the, the total 30, cost. Right. They paid 10% of the 300000 Yes, which, yeah. which is right. 30000 Right. Right, and if we only so spent two hundred thousand, the, thir the right. thirty thousand. My point, exactly. Right. So we're just we're so we're, we're just, just sitting here taking up space until we get all the of the utilities reports. Right. And well, that clarifies it considerably. I I appreciate that. And then we will, uh, as the town manager, we'll we'll get all those in. We will bring them up together, and then at some point we'll have to have a warrant. I think somebody's probably going to petition to do something. Right. The but I'll have to make a decision. I would think that they're, they're probably looking for us for some guidance on which way we should go. Well, I, I suspect so. that's true. And I think so that uh, once once we get it all back, I think we'll have some discussion on that. Oh yeah. But then it's going to be another Warren article to move forward with. That's correct. <laughs> yep. Yeah. 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 So. Well, I just I, I appreciate it, and I'm sure the public appreciates the clarification because I was a little puzzled. Okay. Anything else in the old business? Yeah, I don't know if it's the time to bring it up or not, and I don't want to start a big thing, but <laughs> we have received emails that are illegal, and there has been a huge discussion two years ago on what's legal and what's illegal to put in an email, and we're still receiving them now. And but there was earlier this this session there was emails received that were illegal, and it was spoken to, and then it's happened again. So I am going to put a block on one of the members of the board on my emails because I don't want to be involved 
in any right to know law that's being broken. So I just wanted to state that. I have one question. I have one thing on the old business. You still um, have Article 9. Oh, oh okay. I'm sorry. All right, sorry about that. Nine. You're right. So the next <laughs> thing is Article 9. Mary Louise, you wanted that brought up too. So what did you want to? Well, since that's the one that says ornamental lighting, apparently that was just the way it was drafted by, by Public Works. Uh, could have said standalone well, lighting. I, I, I drafted it. I wanted to have some different designation right. in there simply because it's not a utility thing that we're doing. You just get everybody excited with I ornamental know, but, lighting. But <laughs> it's, it is, it's, it's prettier than what the utilities yeah. put up is the point. Um, if in fact the utilities go underground, then there won't be street lighting unless somebody deliberately puts up a separate line. And I wasn't looking to put up a huge line of aluminum poles running down the road. I think that's, that's kind of gaudy looking myself. And I worked in that industry for 20 something years. I still don't like them, I never have. Um, so what we had talked about was if in fact the utilities go underground and there's no lighting there, then as we put the drainage in, we just put a line down the street next to the drainage and we, we, we run the wires through as we did down the beach and we put up our own lighting and we only pay for the electricity. And it's probably better lighting than what the power company puts up. Okay. It's, it's more it protects the properties of budding them better. So the Public Works Department is at liberty to complete the sewer line from High Street to it. That's right. what they're doing right now. And then like around the corner up to right. Toll Avenue. Right. And they're at liberty to replace the water the That's drainage drainage line. drainage because would be next year water has already been replaced down there courtesy right. of the That's water correct. company okay so the drainage would go next year drainage would go next year we we have an notice out to public works that whenever we do major excavations and this would apply to the drainage yes that we would put conduit in the street so that if we ever have to run fiber optic for the town that the conduit will be there it'll be plugged both ends but we can run the wire up through well it. that's that's a good and, and we do the same thing if we had to run street lighting we put the conduit in the ground and if we decide we need to run street lighting the conduit will be there for the town's use well, that helps. so <coughs> with that's article with article nine yeah we're going to wait till so, next year to do that or we're going to do it in the fall no we're going to do it next year 2019 or just nothing's a courtesy from the water company the taxpayers pay for it oh, well i realize so. that but the water line is already in the, the sewer line will be done. completely reconstructed right. and then we'll wait on the drainage we have to do the contracts yet and we're just too busy with other projects to do the that for payers. until 19. so um so that's why after after we get this the sewer done yes we are going to skim coat the whole road. We're going to shim the road and then overlay it with a, with a single layer so of it's overlay. Flat. So that's flat. Right. Yeah. And then we'll go back in the spring yep. and, and do the sewer and then. <laughs> do the drainage. Do the, uh, sorry, not sewer, <laughs> yeah. do the drainage. And then we will do uh, new sidewalks because the sidewalks up there are pretty bad in some spots. The sidewalks will be repaired. Um, trees that have to be removed because they're a problem or replaced will be replaced or removed and if, if at that point in time granite curbing will be installed the, the parking will be fixed um, all the drains will be fixed so they want they're no longer uh, uh, clay pipe they'll be they'll be plastic pipe yeah. uh, which will last us for a couple of hundred years um, then if, if in fact at that point the town wishes to have the util electric utilities underground probably done at the same time to have the road only up once um, and then we put our own street lighting in as opposed to paying the, the utility company for all those lights forever so okay this was a lot more complicated than the two articles it's a lot more complicated encompassed <laughs> and, and it helps to have a description thank you Any old I do have one thing on yep. old business uh, last week Chim and Rado wasn't here, and the board made, which I think was a very, uh, I, I feel personally it was a very persuasive, unanimous vote that we took that we were going to remain proactive and staying on top of uh, the mosh pipes, regardless yes. of what we get for information, well, when, you know, in a couple weeks. And if it's the will of the board, I would like to uh, reaffirm our vote with Chim and Bridal here, if that was okay. Sure. I'll make a motion. Is that a motion you made? Yeah, or? it is. Okay, I'll second it. All those in favor? 
we're still going to wait. Same yes. exact yeah. as we did right. last year. Oh, we, we so this is the same motion right. we've made like about four or five times in a row now. Right. Yep. So Thank it's, you. Uh, I don't know why we have to do it every week. I have it well. well we moving this rusty. I have a quick question because Fred made a comment on the uh, pipe, the plastic pipe you said should last a long time if we do that on Lafayette Road. Why can't we do plastic pipes for the for the wastewater? We are. Oh, we are going to do that? Well, I mean, I haven't been now to Public Works, so I don't know what oh, no. they're... It, the piping we're replacing today, yeah. doesn't matter where it is, is, is going to be plastic. Oh. It's a special okay. type of plastic. It's especially manufactured, uh, and it will last 50 to 100 years without a problem. It may last longer than that. Uh, you know as perhaps as well as I do that uh, uh, some of the plastic piping you see around the country right now has been in there since the day plastic was invented. It's as perfectly good as the day they put it in. Well, that's interesting. So when we do the actual big project of redirecting or putting in the two plastic. new pipes They're for all waste, be plastic. it will all be plastic. That's correct. I mean, I just didn't that's remember hearing that yep. before. Huh. Okay. Um, I want to... Oh, go ahead. One thing. Sure. I just wanted to ask, you know, it's kind of interesting that um, uh, that you know, because there, there's been so much done to try to make something happen there, uh, downtown Hampton. That what, what there's a dentist office or something like that going in there now. Yep. Yes. And it's interesting. Somebody lost a boatload of money. Because that, when I was on the different boards, um, that was approved to be store um, fronts and apartments, and a huge amount of work and money went into it. So, whatever happened to that project? Just disappeared? Can't tell you. I don't know whether they couldn't raise the capital or the funds to do it. Uh, something obviously happened on a private basis with the developer, and the project was not built. Yeah, because uh, and they sold. Yeah, the um, the the building that's across the street that has those condos in now, which I think they kind of went bankrupt at one point, but now I noticed that they charge a fortune to rent in them. This is the old odd fellows. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's mm -hmm. hard to believe that somebody wouldn't have went forward. They. Collecting a boatload of money now, well, but it's just there's something about downtown. People just aren't. It doesn't happen. It apparently, just did not work out at that location. The mm. dentist is very happy to be going in there, though. That's what yeah, I understand. I'm sure he is, but it's she. that she. or she. I'm sure she is, but that is like such a. It's a tenth of what was going in there that had been approved. That's true. Mm. Yep. And I noticed they don't even. They're not even putting a basement in that building. No, they're not. Where no the other basement. one had a huge basement. There was parking. And blah, 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 blah. Probably would have cost too much, maybe. Well, they had to have special drainage around the foundation. They had a permit to connect directly to the drain out in the, out in the, uh, the main road. They, they had to have that. They had to have a stop and waste in the, in the, in the pipe connection simply because the, the drainage could back up until it's replaced. So like five years go by and the, the project is a tenth of what it was. That's true. That's, that that's happens incredible. all over the place. <laughs> yeah, it is. It happens downtown Hampton a lot. Um, one, one thing sure. I had was uh, kind of it's old businesses. Which we brought up the two, uh, uh, the two people that had passed away. Yes. And this board usually has a, a policy to send flowers to we do. Selectmen or yeah. town employees and stuff like that. Some cases, though, uh, it's not just flowers. People want donations to, as, as in these two people, they want them both to uh, the SPCA. The SPCA. Right. Yeah. And uh, but our policy has been to send flowers. So right. I'd like to amend our policy so that we can absolutely either or, yeah. you know, do what the family's wishes want. If they want to send yeah. it to the SPCA or, or any other. Yep. Non-profit that we allow them to do that. Yeah, we think that's a good so, idea. Second that motion. All those in favor? Unanimous. Excellent. Good idea. Any other old business? Any other closing comments? Oh, wait a minute. How about new business? New business. We already had that. No, okay. Sorry, no. new business. <laughs> I have two quick things. Um, do we have a date yet when we're going to review the non-union raises? Has the chairman set up a 
I haven't set up a date. I got I got to talk. We have the information. With, yeah, and I want to talk with uh, uh, the assistant town manager and see what he's come up to us. So he wants to talk about it, so we can come in. That would have to be a non. Is that a non-public or is that? No, a, it be it's a non-public okay. session to talk about that. You're going to have to talk about non-public vote then in public. Vote in ah, public, okay. right? Yes. All right. So I, I, I'm not nope. trying to rush, but I'd like to I not like get to it that. in We also have the. Yeah. Uh, uh, the evaluations that we have to do correct yeah good. That. so we have okay. those two things and we said those would we get those done in May mm -hmm. right. so yeah uh, and then else? the set yeah the second thing um, we did get a report from Aquarian on the testing for PSOAs and, and stuff right. Right. and uh, it looked pretty positive considering and they don't think they're gonna since it's a they said since well 22 is a bedrock well they shouldn't have if I, I hope I read it correctly that they shouldn't have the PFOAs in there well we're hoping they don't I hope we'll find out obviously over a period of time we'll find that out because they're going to be testing for them because they have to yeah uh, there are two things that they have to watch out for the deep bedrock well which is and you know 500 feet deep yeah it's around uh, that one is salt water well that's what I've asked them about yes and the other is uh, PFOs because the neighbors are concerned about Salinite, salination coming well, in. Well, if, if we get salt water in there, then there's, there could be serious trouble in the aquifer. Because mm -hmm. that's low. Right. But in conjunction with Aquarian, um, we all have a copy of the hydrant report. Uh, I am extremely unhappy at what that report showed. Well, and I received another one today. You have it and I'm no happier than this one. Yes. So I know if Fred may or may not be, I, do you have an idea how your schedule is going to go so we can get them in? I'll be here the 25th when they come. Oh, so you have them scheduled this month for the 25th? No, not no, no. Month. May. June. May well, I mean. May, they're coming in May 25th? May 25th. Okay, good. Yeah. Excellent. Yep. Excellent. Oh. I do, I've actually spoke with, uh, Northampton shares our concerns over the hydrants, as I'm sure it comes to no one's surprise. And um, I sent them a copy of the hydrant <laughs> report. And actually, so I. I, I was yeah. trying to set up. Henry Fuller has to have some back surgery, I think it is, this week. But yeah. he would like to come in and address the entire board. Good. Um, possibly for next week, if that would be OK by everyone on the agenda. I'm not sure, but. It's fine with me. We can. Uh I do have to, he's having his, I just wanted to touch base with him on Wednesday, because after Wednesday, because that's when he's supposed to have his All right, we'll find out if he wants to, then, then but, put a request yeah. in and we'll. Okay. Because the you. Water Council in, in uh, Northampton has been very proactive. Yes, yes they, have. they have. Yeah. Very supportive of us. Yes. Anything else in a new business? Motion to adjourn at uh, 8.07. Okay. Sorry. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you very much, Channel 22. Thank you, thank you, thank you.